Hello, in this video we will explore terms of connector searching as it might be used in conducting legal research. We will cover an overview of terms of connector searching and some best practices. So what is a terms and connector search? The definition I like to use is a search where your terms, often modified with expanders or wildcards, are linked with special connectors such that the database will only return documents that meet all of the requirements from your search string. You may hear this type of search referred to as a Boolean search, named so for mathematician George Boole. We will take a look at Boolean operators and root modifiers more in a moment, but for now it is important to remember that terms and connector searches will only return the documents that contain the string of characters you tell the computer to look for. We'll see how this contrasts with other searching you may have done in the past. As an example, a search for the word bears and then a subsequent search for the word trademark will give you two lists of results, one about bears and the other about trademark irrespective of bears. However, a search for bears and trademark is only going to return results with the words bears and trademark in them, which is a much smaller set of results than either of the two previous searches. This slide shows how your search string, the words and characters you tell a database to look for, might vary among different types of searches. With terms and connectors, the database looks for the exact string of characters that you request. In a natural language search, the database's algorithm is programmed to take your string and try to figure out what items you would like returned. It does not require Boolean operators. Here I separate Google searches from natural language searches merely because the Google search algorithm which most folks are familiar with, functions much better than most of the natural language search tools and legal research databases. That is, Google tends to give much more relevant results and does a better job at looking for synonyms and filtering out irrelevant materials. Because natural language search engines and Google keep the inner workings of their algorithms a secret, you will never fully know why you are presented with the results you are given. In contrast, with a terms and connector search, the database only returns the exact documents you tell it to present. There are plenty of occasions, however, when simply using a natural language or Google search will get the job done. Knowing when to pick which type of search can be tricky. I tend to use terms and connectors more than natural language searches. That is especially so when I have an exact name or phrase I am looking for. This commonly comes up with legal terms of art such as fruit of the poisonous tree, collateral estoppel, or intentional infliction of emotional distress. I also use terms and connectors when I want a precise search. And by that I mean when I want to control exactly what results I get. I favor this type of searching when I know enough about the subject to have an idea how the return documents could be written. In contrast, I do not like to use terms and connector searching when I do not know a lot about the subject matter. This is because I may not know the terms of art in, a, in that particular area and I might not know enough about the subject to determine whether I'm getting good search results. Additionally, general concepts tend to be difficult to research with terms and connectors. That is because you will likely receive entirely too many results to be useful. For example, if you search for trespass in Colorado, you're going to get a lot of results, many of which won't be useful. Instead, I find it more helpful to track down a secondary source, browse the table of contents or index, and read up on the topic. Once you have some background information, return to terms and connector searching when you have a narrower issue, more familiarity with the subject, and a better sense of the terms used in that practice area. Now that we have an idea of when to use terms and connector search, how do we know which terms and connectors to use? Well, there are some standard connectors such as AND and OR. However, many databases have their own idiosyncratic connectors or where some connectors have different functions depending on the database. Thankfully, most databases provide information about what connectors they use and how they function in help sections on their website. In addition, databases like Lexis and Westlaw have helplines with research attorneys who can help you craft searches. Finally, I maintain a terms and connectors cheat sheet that lists the connectors used for the major legal research databases. Please let me know if you would like a copy. These are the most common connectors and modifiers. They will be discussed more in the following slides. 
the AND connector only returns results that have both terms somewhere in the document. Or returns results that have either word anywhere in the document. The AND NOT connector returns results with the first word, but not the second word. This connector should be used with caution because you can inadvertently exclude relevant results. Proximity connectors return results where the first term is within some proximity from, the, from another term. Commonly, these are represented by a slash s for sentence, slash p for paragraph, or slash n where n is some number. For example, bear slash s arms returns results where the word bear is in the same sentence as arms and bear slash two arms returns results that have the word bear within two words of the word arms. Thus, the right to bear arms would trigger a document to be included in a results list, but the bear is waving its arms would not. These connectors operate without regard to word order. So for the above examples, arms could come before bear. If you want the word order to matter, use a plus sign instead of a slash. Root expanders and wildcards enable you to account for spelling variations and also for the use of words as different parts of speech. Google and natural language searches are able to account for those variations typically. Root expanders will place multiple characters to the right of the root word. Most databases search for normal plural words without these. If you are looking for an exact phrase, most often you would search for that phrase enclosed in quotation marks. But be careful, a phrase search won't search for word or spelling variations. Typically, when I conduct a terms and connector search, I go through this process. First, I select a relevant database, such as a case law or law journal database. Then I come up with a short list of terms. And because a terms and connector search won't search for synonyms like Google, I have to brainstorm other ways to phrase my terms. Next, I modify roots of words to account for any spelling variations and different parts of speech. From there, I group similar words together and string terms together with connectors. It takes practice to get a sense of which connectors to use and when. And then finally, because each database may have a different order of operations, I group terms together with parentheses. Most often, you will need to run more than one search because you were returned too many or too few results. Typically, I will skim through my results and modify my search by adding, subtracting, or modifying terms. Or possibly, I will change the proximity connectors to include fewer or more results. Hopefully, this video provided some explanation as to what terms and connectors searching is, when to use it, and how to use it. Importantly, terms and connectors searching takes practice to get used to, so be sure to use it regularly while still in school.